Please welcome Alexander Gopian. Today, we're going to be talking about the newest debate about whether the movie or the book portrays all quiet on the West Front better. Personally, because the book goes into more detail, I think it is better. But I'm curious to see what you think. This new debate seems to be getting a lot of traction, and I'm interested to see where it goes, honestly. Uh, but personally, I'm on the side of the movie, actually, because um, with this addition of music, uh, cinematic scenery, and I just feel like it portrays the story a lot more than the book, and it's able to communicate the message better. Very interesting. So, I believe that the movie's use of visual effects and sound uh, allows for a further immersion of the audience. And this immersive environment allows for a more powerful message that just cannot be achieved with the book. Mm -hmm. So, if we actually look at the movie, um, there's a piece of evidence there that um, the clip where Paul and his friends are being pummeled by uh, artillery. So, look, actually, we have the clip, so let's roll right now. I believe this is pure proof that the movie is better. Honestly, I don't think it's true at all. Without revealing Paul's thoughts, it makes the whole story change. For example, when Paul said he was so alone and was so without hope, in the movie this is not included at all. But you're completely disregarding literary terms and rhetorical devices. These are essential to the book, and they are make the book better than the movie. Imagery, similes, pathos, ethos, logos, they are what make the book so great. One of my favorite quotes from the book is the brown earth, the torn blasted earth while with a greasy shine under the sun's eyes. These scenes are overlooked in the movie, but the book makes you imagine it, it makes you feel it. Breaking news. Multiple countries today have declared war on each other about whether the book or movie portrays all quiet on the western front better. What riots have formed through major cities, leaving most of them on fire. Most, leaving most wondering, is World War III on the horizon? You know, I don't even know how there like, are even movie believers out there. I was looking through the book again, and I found this really good quote. We have lost all feeling for one another. We can hardly control ourselves when our glance lights on the form of some other man. We are insensible, dead men who through some trick, some dreadful magic, are still able to run and kill. This is, there's no way they can even get even close to the descriptive language in the movie. The book is able to give so much, so much feeling. Scouting duty! Do you want to take this? I got it. Alright. I don't know why these people are on the side of the movie, man. It doesn't make any sense. The book has it's way better, bro. It has Himmelstaff and Paul, and you can see the development in their relationship. Crazy. This war is completely pointless. Wait, what's the mission again? Capture the enemy general.
So your name is Matthew Moogs? Yes. You're in a top secret military compound. Do you understand what you're doing here? No, not really. From my understanding, you're on the side of the book. Is this correct? It is. Man, you don't seem to be very smart, do you? The movie's better than the book with nothing saying otherwise, bro. What communicates a message? A good story. How do you get a good story? A powerful way to communicate it. In other words, a movie. 20 years of human experience have let me understand this. Human eyes are better at watching than reading some letters. Let me tell you this. You're on the wrong side of this war. The book is able to help the readers understand by being the f a first person view of World War I. By an author who drafted in World War I. What are you talking about, man? You're not ready to listen. The book also includes parts such as when Paul was a Russian prison guard. Your movie doesn't include any of that. I can see now. I'll stand by the book forever.